Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and as promised, this is essentially part two of a weird two-part series where we look at a number of Transformers odds and ends. In part one, which was the video just before this one, we looked at um, a number of things that really revolved around Christmas of 2022. This time, we're going to look at a number of things that revolves around Christmas 2023 that was given to us by our good friend Maximal10, and it'll range across a whole bunch of things. Yeah, a load of Transformers odds and ends. That's going to be our focus this time around in the latest Gapa True review. One hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gapot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you are at it, light them up, baby. Hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton, and it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that is in the description down below. Also in the description down below, and if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we have to offer to you through spring, or of course hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. Now I said that there would be a lot of odds and ends here, and there are. A number of things from uh, Creo, for example, um, a KO of sort of a Skybite, you'll see when we get to it, a... what else do I have in here? Um... Golly, uh, and there's a bigger, there's a bigger thing from Creo in there. You know what? There's a whole bunch of things in here, including a, just a little bit, just a little dash of G.I. Joe. So without any further ado, how about we head over to the table and take a closer look at this newest mess. So first things first, we have a bag here and it is from Transformers. Dark of the Moon. It's a reusable bag. It's Mission Earth. I'm guessing that that was probably exclusive to Toys R Us at the time. Because um, it's a Toys R Us bag. But, like, the whole notion, and of course it's here in French because it's from Canada. But the whole notion of, like, reusable bags, not really a new concept. At least not up here. But what's inside of here is all of the stuff that Maximal 10 uh, kind of gave for me for the the holidays and he's always wacky with this stuff so it's always interesting we're going to discover it and explore it here together uh in the last video we looked at some odds and ends from him from the christmas of 2022 this stuff is from the christmas of 2023 and i'm just trying to get it all get these odds and ends all out of the way none of them really deserve their own review of course but they're fun to take a quick little look at. And the last time that we looked at uh, odds and ends from the year before, we also included um, a micro world smallest RC from Starscream Wife, as well as some coasters from my good friend, Nicole. So th all of this is from Maximal 10 specifically. Let's see what's in the bag. And so we can sort of call this odds and ends part two. This one I think is going to go a bit quicker than the last one, I hope. We'll see as we go anyway, because we're going to have fun exploring this stuff together. This is everything. I think the best place for us to begin, though, is probably with the four Creos that are still in package. And so here we have some Creons from uh, a long time ago. I assume these are Creons. From a long time ago, they're definitely from Age of Extinction when the Dinobots were done. So what, 10 years ago at this point? And we have Grimlock, Strafe, Slug, and Scorn. All of them come with... Um, some very nice chrome silver bits that serve as their accessories and their, their melee weapons, I suppose. And they have their headpiece on over their snarling faces, which I'll just show like quickly up close in a second. But they also come with like a silver um, alternate head. It says on the back of each of these packages that there are 16 plus combinations. So there's a lot of things that you can do with them. No, I have not opened these, but you get the idea. We all know what a Creon is like. So I'm just going to very quickly... Uh, cycle through them in package um, just so you can see the bits and pieces. I think I said I was going to cycle through them in package. I apologize. I meant at a package. Of course, this is Grimlock and he has like horns on his clear uh, or translucent helmet. Uh, I have his, I don't know what this is, uh, some sort of a sickle or something. He has his red sword, which I think is beautiful. If you want, you can change out the gray lower legs with uh, translucent yellow lower legs. You can change out the arms with yellow arms. You can take these accessories and uh, attach them to the clips on the, uh, I don't know what we call this, battle, battle rack, I guess. The battle rack is held upright by two C-clips 
um, down on the block that says Creo on it. And while there's a little block out front that you're supposed to be able to put the alternate clear um, torso on and the alternate helmet, whether you want to put the orange one on or the chrome one on, <coughs> pardon me, but um, uh, for Grimlock, the torso does not stay on the little flat little block that's there. It just pops off, so I left it off. Um, again, you can really have two looks for the guy being gray or being yellow, and you can use all of the rest of the accessories to come up with all kinds of combinations for lots of different melee attacks and whatnot, as your heart desires. But that's Grimlock. Moving on to Strafe is next, and as you can see, Strafe has... Uh, translucent blue legs and ar uh, and solid blue arms. He has what looks like a spear type of accessory over here. Uh, and his torso and his helmet does fit on there. Uh, he's holding his chrome shield and another kind of trident type of accessory. The only thing really here to note is the wings. You'll notice that one is up and one is down. There's two ways to attach them basically. And honestly, I kind of like these wings. So on the back we have this little accessory, but you can take this one off if you want and attach it up a little bit higher. Uh, I do find that his wings look a little more like bat wings. I don't know, if you didn't tell me that this was Strafe, I don't know if I would guess it, and I don't know if I would guess it as Swoop. The wings look a little bat-ish to me, and of course this guy, you know, <laughs> it, it, he's mostly gray here, even though he's supposed to be blue. I think if I really want to settle on it, I might change out the arms and I might tra change out the legs on this guy. But you know what? He's neat again for what he is. And of course, being a Creo, the head goes left and right. The arms are on ball joints and go all the way around. The wrists rotate, no elbows. There's a waist. Each leg can kick forward and back and kind of go out to the side a little bit if you finagle it. Um, fairly, you know, fairly well articulated and going from strafe. Next, Ooh, we have Scorn and again you can change out the torso and the helmet to be a chrome helmet and a clear torso. Translucent legs, red arms. This was built as a hammer over here. But you can also use that post and take these chrome blades that he's holding in his hands and have them kind of come out over his shoulders by um, using the back piece here and the C-clips. And then the sections that are in his hands now like kind of uh, attach into the C-clips. I didn't do that. I just left the kind of stock one where he has a couple of little tiny gold pieces coming out over his shoulders. And he's holding both of those chromed blades. But I do think the hammer's really cool. And I like that whether the chrome helmet or the red helmet, his whole face other than his eyes is basically covered. Scorn, after all, did have a somewhat nondescript face. And finally... Oh, we have Slug, and Slug comes with a mace over here that I really like, and it, it does, it, like, it is linked. It doesn't stay together super well, but it is linked, so the, I guess the mace piece uh, can actually move around, uh, independent from what's in the hand, which is kind of cool. Uh, a shield over here. You can take these two chrome pieces that are on uh, this long post and basically gives them a double axe, and you can take those off if you want. And they can attach to this black post on the back to kind of give him um, chrome wings out over his shoulders if you're so inclined. This over here looks like another bladed type of accessory. Again, you can change out the torso to a clear one, a chrome helmet, purple arms, and translucent purple legs. So all these are kind of sort of the same while being, you know, molded and unique enough that you can definitely tell that they are different. Dinobots. I do like that since they give you options for how to put things together and display things, I do like that all of them have the like storage for everything else. Like I like this, uh, whatever we call it, weapons wall, I suppose. I think that they're kind of neat for what they are. And finally with the Creos, a 43-piece Optimus Prime that reminds me a lot of Constructbots. Very interesting, very quick and easy to put it together. In fact, all of these Creos were pretty easy and quick to put together. This guy in particular, I guess I'll kind of run through him a little bit. He certainly doesn't transform, but the arms are on ball joints, so they can go all the way around. Uh, not really too much in and out. Uh, because of the way this is constructed, you do get an elbow uh, to 90 degrees, no wrist. The head goes left and right. Uh, the legs, I mean, they can go forward and back. We have a knee to 90 degrees. We even have ankle tilt, but I do find that to use this ball joint um, is tight. So tighter than the, the feet will allow. So the feet are probably going to come apart first. But, like, it's a neat little Optimus. I do wish the torso was a bit bigger instead of the regular, like, Creo torso because... 
I feel like the torso is a bit small for the rest of the limbs. So there you go, Dinobots and Optimus. Whew. Okay, so we're done with the Creos that were in that bag. Also included is a Gundam marker. I've never used anything by Gundam before, so this is interesting. It's black. I think the intention is to do panel lining with it, which obviously the uh, tip is very fine. Um, I, it'll, I'll be interested to see how this goes. Uh, there's also a set of holographic stickers in there. These might be hard to see. That one is Ravage and Soundwave. This one's really hard to see. It's Optimus's face over here and a lot of other Autobots. I find this one particularly difficult to see. Um, you know, good life advice. Wear a helmet, right? Use your head. Wear a helmet. Optimus in the background is what it is. Uh, this one is this way. Optimus and uh, a matrix and stuff. Looks pretty neat. And then finally... Good old Megatron. Uh, this was also in there. Apparently, it is intended to be used to help you, um, like, separate uh, tight joints. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to work for Transformers, though, because this is quite pliable. I feel like that this is going to bend before a joint that's tight will give away, but you never know. We'll give it a try. Second to last brings us to G.I. Joe instead of Transformers. And the very first thing to note is this. It is a set that has O-rings, screws, and it even has the, um, the, like the metal um, piece that's in the pelvis that's used for the legs, like with the two metal ball joints and the hook that the O-ring goes over, and a little screwdriver. It is a G.I. Joe repair kit. Very glad to have this. I have some Joes that I've done repairs on a little bit roughly. But having, like, the proper repair kit, that's fantastic. Also, a 25th anniversary version of Snake Eyes. Now, I have a 25th anniversary that was just mainline. This was obviously a bit of a recolor because there's some gray on Snake, Eye Snake Eyes here. He comes with two swords, his backpack, and his... Um, M16 rifle, I don't know what it is. Uh, in terms of his articulation and whatnot, well, if I take that out of it, I guess I'll run through it. I don't know if I've ever gone through a G.I. Joe's articulation on the channel before, but we'll do it now, because why not? Uh, the head goes left, right, not much up and down. The arms go all the way around, certainly all the way out to the side and down. Um, bicep swivel, elbow to 90 degrees, wrist rotation, which I like on the modern ones. Um, again, when it comes to the torso, because of the way the chest is a ball peg into the lower torso, like you get a wiggle around and stuff, not as much of a bend as you might like, although he does, this guy does have a nice waist bend, which is nice, or hips, I guess I should say. Kick all the way forward, not much back, but again, these are, you know, based on people, so how much back would you expect? Um, can pretty much do all the way, you know, splits all the way to the side. Mm, double knee, I think. Yeah, double knee, way up. No thigh swivel, but we do have like an ankle swivel, foot swivel, so like you kind of get it down lower on the leg. Stands quite well, honestly. And then we have Timber. Now, I love Timber. I actually have a version of Timber just in a walking pose. This Timber has one leg up, almost like he's in a snarling, like about to pounce attack pose. Zero articulation on Timber, but man, oh man, do I absolutely dig having him. And finally, we got this weird thing. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, that's a shark. It must be a version of Skybite or a KO of Skybite. I mean, not really. I don't know what these are, but you'll see that this is hardly a Skybite. Um, I don't have any instructions. It didn't come with any instructions. So this is, this is kind of interesting to try and sort of figure out. I can tell you that... This and this, these two fins, they come out. I think that they can be used as like maybe melee accessories or something. Um, I can't really recall for sure. But they come out. Um, the entire top section up here, this comes off because this is uh, in essence a shield for him to hold. There's a, there's a handle in right here that's flipped up, but you flip it down. So you got a shield there. And somewhere in here, there's um, a sword, I think. I'm not sure where, where that is now. It's not in the package. Maybe it's in with the guy. I'm hoping. And I can't really tell you how the transformation goes here. We're just going to try and do it. So the arms here on the side, they will definitely come out. Then we should be able to start to bring those legs out. Here's his sword. Um, 
if I'm not mistaken, these now split. This comes out to the side, and this comes out to the side. The legs now should be able to straighten out and a foot up, straighten out and a foot up. I'm gonna stand our guy up so that we can finish him off. Okay, now that we've got the upper body done, I think this whole piece, yeah, flips down onto the back. And does this flip? Yeah, and that flips up. And then these pieces, they separate and on armatures and here they extend kind of out over the shoulders. You saw that he dropped the shield. He does not hold this well at all. If you want, you can leave these in on the side. I think you could pro probably stick this in the hand too. Yeah, you can stick it in the hand too if you're so inclined and the sword's over here. So the sword stays in the hand well. These do not stay in the hand well. And this does not stay in the hand well. I mean, I guess that, you know, the fact that a shark can turn into this is kind of neat. There's a lot of like chromey paint on this guy. It feels exceedingly like Japanese inspired to me. Um, but like in warrior mode and robot mode, like it, it feels like it's something that came from, I don't know, like some sort of a mech from Sentai or uh, uh, some other anime or like something that might fight Godzilla or you know what I mean? Like that's what it feels like to me more than a sky bite, obviously. In terms of articulation for the guy, I mean, nothing, nothing, um, nothing at the head. Um, these are very much in the way. The arms, I mean, they can, I guess you can get them out. These are a nuisance. This goes up, but I see no point really in that going up. I guess that's as far out as that can go. Um, 90 degree at the elbow, bicep swivel, wrist rotation, which is a bit of a shock. Nothing at the waist. These pieces here get in the way. Uh, the legs by rights can go forward, back, thigh swivel, knee bend, actually double knee bend, uh, up and down at the foot. If these weren't here, I mean, you could get bigger splits. I don't know if there's a way to maneuver the chunks out of the way. Here's the thing. The materials of the actual robot feel pretty good. The paint is really actually quite nice. But all of the white materials of the shark feel garbage. Very thin, very garbage. I don't even mind the fact that the dude has a backpack because it really doesn't in hinder anything or get involved with anything. It's not a nuisance. Maybe this even... Does this... Again, I might not even be doing this exactly right. I feel like this might bend again somehow, but I can't tell you how it goes. Good transformation. Great look. The articulation hindered by the kibble, so it is what it is. All in all, though, with our guy here and everything that was in the bag, I would say it was a very wild and wacky holiday season, thanks to our good buddy, Maximal Ten. And here we are once again, and again, I can't say here he is because I don't have anyone, or here she is because I don't have anyone, uh, but you know what, that KO of that shark is neat, great in shark mode. It's actually okay in robot mode, other than the white kibbly pieces that I suppose are supposed to be kind of like clothes hanging off. It really hinders the articulation of what is otherwise a pretty good bot. I suppose you could pop those pieces off if you were so inclined. Uh, the Creos are neat for what they are, but at the same time, I'm not really a Creo guy. But I appreciate, you know, um, I, I guess the effort that they put into making sure that you not only got the, the base robot, the base Dinobot, uh, but you got a whole bunch of extra accessories and even a way to store them. The bigger Optimus Prime, I feel like he could hold together just a little bit better, but I think for me the star out of this would have to be Snake Eyes and if, if I'm being really specific, the timber in more of an action pose. Plus, it's nice to have, like, I, I've never used a Gundam marker, so it'll be interesting to see how effective that is. Um, the uh, thing to help like when you have tight joints I don't know how well that will work we'll see as time goes on but you know what it was a bit of a hodgepodge mess but I gotta say as always it was gifted to me I cannot um, you know say thank you enough it is certainly something that is very appreciated and naturally in a quirky weird way does indeed add to the collection hope you enjoyed these kind of 
wacky looks at some wacky items. I appreciate you guys coming by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we have to offer to you through spring or course, Hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button. Stick around, man. Have some fun with us here on the channel. Why not? But through it all, especially don't forget that somehow, someway, each and every single day, you right there, you do make a difference in the world. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, right here inside the videos.